Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this week's episode, we are going to be reviewing the TV, the Apple TV show, Hello Tomorrow. This is uh, an interesting show. I, when it was first advertised, I first saw the previews for it. It was, I really was anticipating it. Yeah, me too. The, uh, the whole uh, aesthetic is very, is very appealing. It's essentially, it's retrofuturistic, right? So it's like right, which is yeah. basically retrofuturism was born after World War II, but yeah. it's essentially looking, looking at scientific, sci- you know, sci-fi predictions um, through the eyes of another time, mm-hmm. and uh, and and it's very illuminating. You could you could see very interesting things about. It's also it's often very revealing about the culture itself mm-hmm. and how they envision it. it. Tells us a lot about them. But um, retrofuturism for the 1950s is it's beautiful. It's fascinating. It's really compelling. And it really started. It was the be- really the beginning of this retro right. futurism movement. And of course, that has been now subdivided into specific technologies. And that's why there's cyberpunk, there's steampunk, there's atom punk, all these other punks are, punk. are kind of right, cassette, cassette punk. punk. It's all kind of related to this idea of uh, of looking through a specific lens in, into a technology and predicting future developments. Mm-hmm. So this and show it's, just, it's fascinating stuff. This show is in the 1950s, but it's an alternate 1950s. It's the 1950s if the technology that they predicted had come true, right? So they have hover cars and they have robots and stuff like that. Um, And in fact, you know, one of the biggest selling points of this TV show is the retrofuturism aspect of it. Oh my God, it sucks you in. As soon as you see that preview, you're like, "I'm, I'm watching this. It looks wonderful. But in the end, this show boils down to, like we always say, boils down to the the quality of the writing and the characters and the character mm-hmm. development. And I think, you know, that really largely is what I'm going to be commenting on tonight because that's all that really matters. Yeah. I mean, the way I would summarize it is like the opening credits are awesome and they're the best part of the whole show. It's almost <laughs> as if they shot their whole budget and their whole creative wad on the look and feel of the show and didn't have much left over for, you know, a compelling story. Yeah. I mean, they, they definitely, for a show that was selling itself on its retro futurism, they didn't go too headlong into the futurism itself, right? They have a few things that they have. There's hover cars everywhere. That's great. Mm, They're yep. cool. But, you know, after the first episode, they lose their charm right away. It's like, okay, cars are hovering. You know, but then they have a robot here and there. And then Same they, robot, though. Same exact robot type. Yeah. Fulfilling all these di- different roles. They have one model. So. Yeah, it's one <laughs> model that they change. And all right, I, I, I like guess. the fact that they have the, like, the, the, the phones is like a massive console yes. with a little computer screen and everything. But they didn't lean into the futurism enough. Yep. They could have done no, more. No, again, the, Agreed. the three people sitting here were mm. futurism fanatics. We love right. futurism. Yeah. So we wanted to see more of what their vision was of the future. But the problem is, and, and my major disconnect is, they sold the show on that. It's mm. even called Hello Tomorrow. You know what I mean? It's yeah. basically yeah. saying we're in the 1950s and we're talking about tomorrow, which is their future. And they didn't go deep enough into it. They didn't give us the flavor. In fact, they didn't do the 1950s enough in this show. Well, I mean, I don't think it's supposed to be the 1950s. It it's is, supposed to be the future as envisioned by the 1950s. But it, but it, Steve, it so totally is in the 1950s. I know the culture setting. is 1950s. But they so they didn't do the culture well enough because it's well, a, they they deliberately changed certain things like. You know, there's, they basically got rid of the sexism and racism, which is probably a good call, to be honest with you. Yeah. And, um, you know, not everybody is smoking, which is another... They didn't get rid of the sexism, though. I mean, just because there there isn't any flagrant sexism in the show. I mean, women are still the housewives that hand drinks to husbands when they come back and everything. So I don't feel like they gave us enough of what that what the culture actually is. It's a little, it's a little sterile. It's a little, yeah, no, the whole thing comes off as a little sterile, which I think... You could say that's deliberate because the retrofuturism of the 50s was sterile, right? Their mm-hmm. vision of the future was right. sort of the sanitized sterile future. But there, is, there are times when you do things for accuracy that are not good for storytelling. Yeah. You know? And the sterile thing, in a way, it's, it, it works in that it's, it feels like, yeah, that is the kind of that vision of the future. But it just makes for a, a show that's not – 
It's a little boring to watch. It's not the most compelling show. That's right. the most compelling show. And there's also a good, this is a good point. I don't, I don't want to gloss over. I want to stress this point that Steve is making that this, even though it looks like the fifties, this, this isn't really supposed to be the fifties. This is really supposed to be the seventies as envisioned by the fifties. Understood. Mm. I, get so it. That's, so that's, I get it. That's a kind of a different take than, Oh, this is fifties with, high tech but, yeah, but not, yeah. i question whether or not you're just saying that or if that's actually because because there's no proof of this in the show whatsoever and mm. i say this all the time that we have to if it's not there if you can't get it from the text right if you're talking about reading a story if it's not in the text then it's not really there yeah, yeah but yeah, it's sometimes, like an extrapolation of retro some things are left best unstated though and i think not saying what the year is is a good thing yeah. This is a, the undefined future. It's not the 1950s, though, because that's not, you know, there's no reason to think that it's an alternate reality. But anyway, okay. That, that, but that the aside. fact that we're, we're talking about this and that we're questioning it and we're not sure and all that, that's bad writing. I don't think so. That's not necessarily, not everything needs to be answered. Again, I that's think. That's a minor point, I think, compared to the, having, the more problems that we see. When you're doing futurism, sometimes having it being in, in an undefined time, it works to your advantage. And and that's, I, that's fine. But the, anyway, otherwise, you would say that's too early for the, or too late for the I get, I get that, but I, I feel like because it's so, it's so the 1950s. But that's the that's the idea that they extrapolated their culture into the future. It's right. like that's it's exactly like is. Fallout 4. You had 2070. It was explicitly 2070, and it was 100% 1950s culture. Sure. Right? It's the same thing. Yeah, but you knew what the year was. Yeah, but so that does <laughs> it, it, All right, that's so, an irrelevant point. But so I agreed. Steve and I were chit-chatting a little bit before, and Steve said that this show has no highs and lows. This show has no highs and no lows. It doesn't really have a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You just watch it. It's mildly entertaining. You don't really have it. You're not on an emotional roller coaster. There's not much intrigue. There's not much character interaction that's really interesting. It yeah. just kind of happens in front of you. It's like it's, why, a, it's an undramatic drama. It's exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and and I enjoyed it, and I look forward to watching the next episode, and that's fine. But in today's day, the way how epic TV is right now, this golden age of TV that we're continuing to experience. This doesn't cut it in terms yeah. of like some of the really good stuff that's on TV these days. I'm, I'm watching Perry Mason, yeah. you know, and I just, I really watch the good. Americans and, yeah. well, and there's justified. No, there's, like, oh my God. There's no amazing. action at all in this show. It's all about people talking and doing stuff. There's no action, right? So it, when you have a show that has no action, which is which is a yeah. way that you can give almost anything a heartbeat if there, if every once in a while there's a fist fight or some type of you know some type of over the top thing. Wait, let me but finish. it doesn't have to be. But because they don't have any of that, then there needs to be intrigue. Even there more. There needs need. to be drama between people. There needs to be like things happening. And in the, the dialogue plot. has to be really good. Right. And the dialogue right. is not really good. Um, yeah, I agree. And it's it's a little disappointing because they didn't. They had a great idea, I think. They didn't execute it well, and. Uh, it, for me, that's like, well, they shot their wad. Like yeah. the whole retro futurism thing now is... Was the whole thing. It, they shot that idea on a show that's mediocre and was like, you know, like if there isn't a season two, I, I wouldn't be... It right. Would, would forget, this is the kind of show I'll forget about it, you know, very, very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. From, I won't, I won't be really power. thinking about it From a storytelling tomorrow. perspective, they didn't have a compelling enough story. Yeah. They had like, it, it's, a, it's, you know, because we're in spoiler territory, of course... Mm -hmm. There, there's one idea here. It's that there's a there's a salesman who's a scam artist mm -hmm. who is selling people on retro futurism, yeah. right? He's basically saying, I'm going to send you to the moon. You're going to live on the moon, right? That's the whole, the that, whole thing. He's right selling there. them on the vision of the future that was popular at that time. And yeah, there's just, there, there, need, there needed to be a couple more layers there. Definitely. It's not and, complicated enough. And, and the characters... Be, or, you know, as much as I can give you descriptions of the characters, yes, there is there is good initial character development. There's different people; they have different personalities and all that stuff. Yeah, but they're kind of sterile in they're, their yeah. in their oh, each they're all, way. They're all a little flat. Each of them are flat. There isn't there isn't life in these characters, which I think means that they didn't write these characters one stitch beyond what's who, happening on exactly screen, who yeah. they are right yeah. in that moment. They didn't go, this guy, you, you know, this was this person's past and right. really, really make the, these characters come to life. So we're just kind of watching them kind of fumble through this basic, non-impressive storyline. That's it. That's yeah, it in a nutshell. Disappointing. Disappointing. Yeah. yeah. 
great aesthetic. I love, again, my favorite part of the of every episode is the opening credits. <laughs> but yeah, the, so at uh, least watch episode, that. Yeah. If you watch the first episode, you'll see everything that's cool about the show, and then I think you're, you're good done. to go. Yeah. Yeah, you're <laughs> okay. That's true. All right, guys, if you enjoy this show, short episode today. Not much to talk about with this Hello Tomorrow. Um, I kept th- I keep thinking of Hello Fresh. You know that that no. food thing they deliver food to your door. No. It's called Hello Fresh. Right. Anyway, if you enjoy science fiction, if you enjoy hearing critiques on bad science fiction, please join us. We are Alpha Quadrant Six. You can go to Alpha Quadrant and the number six dot com. You can go to our Facebook page, and we have a Patreon. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Alpha Quadrant and the number six. And we'll see you next week. Yeah.